understand. I am resurrection and I am life, says the, 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 the Lord. Whoever has faith in me shall have life even though he die. And everyone who has life and has committed himself to me in faith shall not die for, 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 forever. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives and that at the last he will stand upon earth. After my awakening, he will raise me up and in my body I shall see God. I myself shall see and my eyes behold him who is my friend and not a stranger. For none of us has life in himself and none becomes his own master when he dies. For if we have life, we are alive in the, 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 the Lord. And if we die, we die in the, 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 the Lord. So then whether we live or die, we are the, 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 the Lord's possession. Happy from now on are those who die in the, 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 the Lord. So it is, says the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light. Grant that your uh, servant, Millie, being raised with him, may know the strength of his presence and rejoice in his eternal glory, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Proverbs. A capable wife who can find. She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She is like the ships of the merchant who brings her food from far away. She rises while it is still night and provides food for her household and tasks for her servant girls. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her hand to the distaff and her hands hold the spindle. She opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of her household when it snows for all her household are clothed in crimson. She makes herself coverings. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the city gates, taking his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them. She supplies the merchant with sashes. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household, and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her happy, her husband too, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, and you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. 
Give her a share in the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the city gates. The word of the Lord. Please join me as we say together the Psalm 23, which is found on the inside of your bulletin. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading from the book of Revelation. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever, Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. And then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple, and the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In your blue hymnal, let us sing together hymn 645. Hymn 645. Please stand.
the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Be seated. It says in the bulletin that the Reverend Sean Griffith is going to give the message today, but he's not. He is our pastor and priest here. And has some medical condition. Otherwise, he would be here to uh, celebrate Millie's life today. And so it's now the not-so-reverend Houston Matthews who will (laughs) deliver the message today. Today is a day of mixed feelings over the loss of our loved one, Millie but it's also a time of joy to know that Millie is no longer suffering. And as it says in the Gospel of John that, that Jesus has prepared a place for her where there is no pain or suffering, but life eternal. We offer our prayers and condolences to her sons, David Spurrier, wife Katie, Mike Spurrier, wife Pam, David Spurrier, Bill Spurrier, Chuck Wilson, and Jay and Mel Cocker. Her 14 grandchildren, I didn't know that she had that many. I know it was a prolific bunch, but. <laughs> and 13 great grandchildren. I know that you will miss Millie and the times that you have shared with her, but the memories go on. As Paul said, uh, when we die, is being absent in the body, is being in the presence of the Lord. And so we are thankful for that. Millie's personality reminds me of an old country song. Let me be when I am weary, just a little more cheery. Think a little bit more of others and a little bit less of me. And I believe that that was Millie's personality. She would uh, open her arms wide, a touch, a card, a word of love, and sometimes really not taking more care of herself because she was so oriented for others. And that's what Jesus taught us, to be other-oriented in a world that seems somewhat me-oriented. In June of 1991, I was called to be the rector and priest 
of All Saints Episcopal Church. It was established by the Reverend Robin Johnson. We are familiar with the Robin Johnson House, which Melly spent a lot of time in, in her employment and her volunteer work to those that were dying. I've known the Cocker family since I was a child. In fact, uh, a lot of us here remember World War II and us baby boomers and everybody scratching things out to make a living. And we all had good times together. My mom and dad and a lot of your parents would go to party parties with Dotsie and John and uh, that was a good time. Uh, but I did not really know uh, Millie uh, until I arrived at All Saints Church. And what a blessing that she has been to me. When the Matthews family arrived in Gastonia after years of not being in our hometown, uh, they said a prophet is not welcome in his hometown, but we were. My, me as prophet, my wife is the prophetess <laughs> or senior uh, sergeant major, as I say. <laughs> that was the first time I met with Millie. She told me she was the wife of John Cocker. And I thought, oh Lord, what a load. <laughs> what a responsibility. Lady, you got your hands full. And it turned out my wife and I had a great relationship with John and Millie over the years. Senator Marshall Roush wrote a book a few years ago called Life is a Team Sport. When I think of John and Millie as a pair, I think exactly of that, that they were a team. And, and they played the game, and, uh, and they were life companions. Um, just as Marshall adored his wife, so did John adore, <clears throat> adore his. John and Millie gave unselfishly with their money, time, and talent to All Saints Church. We became close friends. We enjoyed many meals and social times together, but I do remember uh, Millie and John were living down in York, down in that farm down there. And so early on, they wanted to invite Shay and I on a Saturday night uh, for a meal. And uh, I said, well, usually I don't go out on Saturday night because I gotta get up and preach in the morning and I gotta go to York and then come back. They said, oh, it'll be okay, we'll, we'll enjoy it. And as you know, both of them were lovers of animals, especially Millie. Uh, we were getting ready, she was making some hors d'oeuvres and there was a cat around. And I noticed that she had shrimp boiled and I guess it was cooling off. And uh, I noticed the cat dipped into the pot and started eating the shrimp. And Millie said, it's all right, we can eat it anyway. <laughs> so, I told, <laughs> so I told my wife, I said, man, I, I ate it, but I ate a lot of that shrimp. And I don't know when the cat entered, I, the cat got into the pot, but I heard her scream. And I thought, man, I hope I don't get sick and not able to preach on Sunday morning. I'm going to explain this one. Anyway, we had a great time together. Millie was involved uh, thoroughly in the life of the church. She studied to be a lay reader and Eucharistic minister. Uh, she was involved in, in the church in many ways. Uh, she hardly missed a Sunday unless she was out of town. She had attended adult uh, education on Sunday morning um, with our Bible study, and she spent a whole year studying the disciple program, which was started by the Methodist Church, to go through the Bible from 
Genesis all the way through the book of Revelation. And that was a real commitment because that took a whole year to do that. And so she stuck to her guns on that one. Um, in the mid-90s, uh, John and Millie attended, this is the spiritual part, the Curcio weekend. Curcio is a weekend, uh, it's a short course in Christianity where you, you come in on, there we go, you come in on a, uh, oh well, you come in on a, can you hear me? You come in on a Thursday and then you uh, spend the whole weekend. And the whole process is to, to rekindle your relationship for God. You learn about who is God, is there a God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, the church, and, and what we're supposed to do with our baptismal thing, and in the extension of God's kingdom. I never saw John cry, and I never saw, yeah, I did see Millie cry a lot, but anyway, the weekend uh, was outstanding, so there's a closing service, and you go up to the altar, and whoever the spiritual directors are uh, give you a cross and a coin, and it says on one side, it says, um, I depend on Christ, and he depends on me. And that, I, that was a very transformative moment for John and Millie. And it deepened their relationship uh, to, to each other, to the church, and to the community that they served. After John died, uh, Millie stayed at All, at All Saints Church for some time. And uh, she came to me, and she comes to me quite a few times asking my opinion on certain things. She said, I think I'd like, I need to move my membership to this church. And since I had to retire, I had to, had to come here uh, for a place to worship. So I told her, yes, I think you need to come here. I think you'll love Father Sean. I think you'll love the people here. I think you will like the, the diversity in our congregation, the love and care that we have for each other. And uh, I said, you know, Millie, sometimes people can, uh, God can pull you out of one pew and move you to another. And we talked about the Presbyterian aspect. I said, you know, I did that. I left the Presbyterian church to become Episcopalian. And people said, why do you do that? And I said, well, I was predestined. <laughs> so, <laughs> Millie was devoted to her family. All she could talk about is her children, her grandchildren, her great-grandchildren, how much she loved them, how much she cared for them. Through the good times and bads, through the joys and sorrows, for the celebration of life. She loved her family. She loved her church. She loved her community. Even in retirement, after she retired from hospice, she continued to volunteer uh, as hospice to minister those who are going through the last stages of life. To give you an example of the kind of care that Millie would give is my wife was diagnosed with breast cancer early, late in 19, around the time COVID came, and she had uh, 18 months of treatments, um, chemotherapy and uh, radiation. Every week, Shay got a letter from Millie for 18 months that she was praying for and she loved her. 
And that meant so much to my wife and to me and my family. Just an example of many times that she would do things like that, even for strangers. She had a great love for God and family. She loved her country. She was a patriot. She loved America. She loved her church. And she was always willing to write a note or say something kind, even to strangers. The Old Testament lesson for the day from Proverbs talks about the character of a wife and mother. And although this was written centuries ago about a wife and a mother, and it was sort of an agrarian society, so it, in a modern society, it's a little bit different. But some of the qualities, even back then, um, really remind me of who Millie was. Her husband has full confidence in her. She brings him good, not harm, maybe a frying pan on the head every once in a while. She provides food for a family and others. She sets about her work vigorously. No grass growing under this gal's feet, I'll tell you that right now. She's not an idle person. <coughs> She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hand to needy. Hospice, camp, church members, friends and family. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh. When you live with John, you gotta laugh a lot. <laughs> she speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction. He knew where Millie stood on every issue. Transparency, man, that's what I like. Or some of them in the church, I could, I, you know, they weren't very transparent sometimes, but this gal, she was transparent. Her children called her blessed. Charm is deceitful and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. We'll miss Millie. But we are reminded in today's gospel from John when the disciples were fearful of what would happen because Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. I go and prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Millie understood this. As we leave the celebration today and the celebration of Millie's life, we will remember Jesus' words uh, in the summary of the law. Love God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. And if you feel a little bit weary, be a little bit more cheery. Think a little bit more of others and a little bit less of you. May the souls of the departed through the mercies of God rest in peace. Amen. You all would turn it in your bubble into the 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 apostles creed. And in the 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 assurance of eternal eternal life given at baptism, let us proclaim our faith. Please stand. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, 
I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. We believe in to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Prayers for the departed found on page 497 in the Book of Common Prayer. Page 497. Our sister, Millie, let us pray to the Lord Jesus Christ who said, I am the resurrection and the life. Lord, you console Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn Millie and dry the tears of those who weep. Hear us, Lord. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us. In our sorrow. Hear us, Lord. You raise the dead to life. Give to our sister eternal life. Hear, Hear us, Lord. You promise paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our sister to the joys of heaven. Hear, Hear us, Lord. Our sister was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give her fellowship with all your saints. Hear us, Lord. She was nourished with your body and blood. Grant her a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Hear us, Lord. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our sister, Millie, and let our faith be a consolation in eternal life, our hope. Hear us, Lord. Father of all, we pray to you for Millie, for all those who we love and see no longer. Grant to her eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon her, and may the souls of the departed through the mercies of God forever rest in peace. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Greet one another in peace. God's peace. 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 Y'all may have a seat. For those who have been here b before and those for whom th 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 this is your f f first time, we are so glad that you are here. Um, we're now going to break bread. Uh, if you are b b b b b b baptized and you receive communion at your church at home, you are free to take it here. Uh, we're going to say some prayers up here. Then we're going to bring the bread and wine down front. And I ask you to just let yourself out row by a row. The bread will be in front, and then uh, we're going to have a couple of people with the, 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 the wine on each uh, side. So if you come up from this side here, you'll take some bread, some wine, and then, and then go back to, you, to your seat. And if you're from this side here, you'll come down, take the bread, take the wine, and go back to your seat. One of the important things about Eucharist at, at a funeral is that Millie throughout her, her life broke bread and took wine with Jesus. Christ, after he had died and came back, was made known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. And it is in some small way 
a communion that we had to take part with Mally. A way that we commune with her and with all all the faithful who have died. And so I invite you, if you feel so moved, even if even if it's you your first time, to come and break bread with us. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice to, 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 to God. You will turn, please, to page 361 in your red Book of Common Prayer. And please stand.
the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who rose victorious from the, 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 the dead and comforts us with the blessed hope of everlasting life. For to your faithful people, O Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when our mortal body lies in death, there is prepared for us a dwelling place eternal in the heavens. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the, the, the glory of you, your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You may stand or nail here. Holy and gracious Father, in, for in your infinite love you made us for you yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and became subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent G Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect a sacrifice for the, the, the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his d disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to, to, to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the, 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 the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this uh, sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you th 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 these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through you, your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Father Almighty, now and for forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is a sacrifice for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
our post-communion prayer is on page 498 in your red b -b book of co co common prayer. Page 498. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you that in your great love you have fed us with the spiritual food and drink of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, and have given us a foretaste of your heavenly banquet. Grant that this sacrament may be to us a comfort and affliction and a pledge of our inheritance in that kingdom where there is no death, neither sorrow nor crying, but the fullness of joy with all your saints, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Now, I'm going to need you, your help here, so please turn to, to page 499. Page 499. Give rest, O Christ, to your servants with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sign, but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind, and we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth we shall return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the, the dust. Yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sign but life everlasting. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Mary. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints and light. Amen. Our closing hymn, 645, hymn 645. Please stand.